there's a confidence that I have in his ability, the confidence that I have in his word, the confidence that I have in his word in me that causes me to have stability and be able to stand and understand that what I'm going through now is a fleeting moment, but it does not interfere with my real joy. Come on, somebody. So I'm, 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 I'm developing this. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like this because I'm trying to give you a detachment away from your feelings about what you feel like. Amen, somebody. Why do I say that? Because there is something that is much more powerful that the enemy is afraid of in every true believer than just what you feel like. When we look at the scripture and we look at the book of Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, and we are going to uh, begin reading at the first verse. Balance me some sound on this side of the speaker. Thus all the work, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished. Somebody said finished. finished. He brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated. And the silver, the gold. And all the vessels he put in the treasures of the, of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribe, the chiefs of the father's houses of the Israelites to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel gathered to the king at the feast in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came and the Levites took up the ark. I want to pause right there because there, there's, there, there's something that I want to bring out. And that is, I was listening to the young man speak in his, in his presentation. And he was talking about breaking down uh, denominationalism and breaking down... Uh, just the different protocols of how we have structured things. There's nothing wrong with structure. There's nothing wrong with the way we organize things. But we must remember in the, in the spiritual realm, who reign dominant. You got, you got, you, you got the priests who, uh, in my studies, there were uh, divisions in all of the tribes. And out of all the tribes, there were over 28,000 divisions. And just let me just break this down for a minute because it'll make a lot of sense in a minute. There were over 28,000 divisions. And so we, we, we argue about, you know, uh, the nurses board and, the, and, you know, and they took my napkin and she took my handkerchief and I was supposed to serve the pastor today. And, you know, we only got a few departments in our church, you know, the usher board and the nurses board and, you know, the people that work the tape table and, you know, and so we think that there is some kind of confusion in all of that. Um, but the bottom line of it is you're dealing with 28,000 divisions. Let me just try to break one of them down. There was, there was the treasury department and then there was, there was uh, the group that counted uh, the monies that came in. There was a group that was over the fabrics that came in. There was a group that was over all of uh, the, the silver. There was a group that was over the gold. And then there was a group that was over the money that came into the temple from the outside. There was a group that came over the, uh, over the money that was already inside. Then they had a supervisor. I'm not exaggerating this. This is where we, it, it, it may have been maybe almost 8,000 people just over the offering department. Come on, somebody. So they, 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 uh, they, they counted the money, and then they, they counted the people that counted the money, and then they, and then they counted, you know, the, 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 the sacrifice that was dedicated specifically for the temple, for the building of the temple. And so they had to govern all of these things. They had to balance out all of these things. And so there were 28,000, over 28,000 divisions. But the Bible says here that in the midst of all of those divisions, all of what they did, there was a group that 
They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't ask the chief of finances to do it. They did not ask the person that was over all the cooking to do it. They didn't ask the people that, 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 that drove the carts to do it. There was a specific people that the Lord had, had, had pulled out of the group and said that these people would be called my own. And the reason why, I will be their portion. And that, is, and that is another level as we pass through the different phases of the tribes. We can find an identification of ourselves and where we are in God based upon these tribes. And so then you grow to a point where you get to a point where the Lord says, now I am your portion, which means you come to a place in God where you don't look for natural means to support and govern and guide you. You learn that the Lord is my portion, which means I come to a place where I don't fret anymore. I come to a place where I can look right at situations and ignore it because I already have confidence in my job. Because when I'm brought to a place where I'm chosen to become a part of the Levitical order, a part of the Levitical order, then that's a place where the Lord denounces worry out of my life. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. Because I'm called to carry something. I'm not over the treasure department anymore. I'm not just a nurse. I'm not just an usher. I don't just work the tape table. Who am I preaching to today? I'm not just a person that's singing the choir. I'm a part of the Levitical priesthood. I've been chosen to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Are we going somewhere with this today? I've been, I've been chosen to carry something. He's not fighting me because, because I sing good and because, you know, the devil just a lie. The devil just be messing with me. No, no, that, that ain't why the devil is messing with you. Yeah. They been look around in church and, and seem like some people in the church just, you know, they just be hibbity scabbity skibbity scabbity you know, and always got to dance and a shout. And then you just be looking like, you know, I'm always at prayer and I don't know what's going on. It's like, you know, everything just going backwards. And, and the more I pray, it's like the worse it get. Then I, and I got dedicated to prayer and everything started falling apart. No, it didn't start falling apart. It started falling off. Oh, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. It didn't just fall apart. God wouldn't allow us to, and my kids, and I, no, no, no. He started breaking down the idols. He started breaking down everything that you set before him. When my husband acting crazy, he started breaking down the idols. He starts putting stuff in protocol, spiritual protocol, spiritual protocol. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. When I got, and I lost my job, spiritual protocol, because that used to be your God. So I got to redirect everything in your life and bring you to the where the true God is. Bring you to a place where you say, if I don't have a job, I got God. If I don't have no money, I got God. Because what he's trying to find out is when I call you to be a part of the Levitical priesthood, am I first? And so how do you know when God is first? God is first when you don't trip out over stuff like that. See, he letting you know where you... <laughs> is anybody getting help right there? I just start praying, but well, you start praying and then you start purifying. Is that what you asked for? The Lord purify me. Lord, take me higher. All right. Let's go. Because when you said, Lord, take me higher, you said, take me above the earth realm. When you said, Lord, take me deeper, you said, God, take me beneath the earth realm. You trying to hold on the earth and go higher. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. He has to bring your spirit to a place where everything is worn in your life like a loose garment. If it's there, okay. If it ain't, we still going with God. Oh God. Whew. That's why I want us to just, you know, I just want to just kind of just bring it, you know, just bring the table because I want I want I want I want I want to really plow with this today. I'm going to really plow with this today so we can get our focus. Our focus. Because when you are called to be a Levitical priest, when you're called to that order, and you can tell when your life starts, start, starts moving in that direction. Because a lot of things, like, like people say, you know, I just want you to pray for me because I just really had some st the situation. And then, and then, you, you know what? It's a calling. It's, a, it, it, it's, like, it's like you come to a consciousness that I'm carrying something that is very supernatural. 
Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know we, we always say, I'm saved, and the Lord saved me, and, and Jesus saved me, and Jesus lives in my heart. But we really don't understand the total, the total package of what happened when all of that took place. See, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, they did not have a way into the presence of the Lord. So they were all just fools, just doing everything, just acting crazy. And so the Lord just like, I can't kill everybody because they don't know. They don't know how to get into my presence. So he said, I'm going to design this whole uh, structure of the temple. And I'm going to, you know, establish a, a, a tabernacle in the wilderness. And that's purposeful, that he establishes the tabernacle in the wilderness. The Bible said now, well, how does that relate to us? We are now the temple of the Holy Ghost. So where does he, where does he first establish his temple? In the wilderness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In the wilderness. Well, our prophet, there's a lot of stuff ain't going right. Well, because he, because he's, a, he, he, he's establishing the first tabernacle in the wilderness. It cannot be authentically a true tabernacle unless it is birthed out of the wilderness. You want it to get better. He's trying to show you what you're working with. He's trying to tell you that really the attacks against you is just proving the fact that you are truly, authentically the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know what I need today? I need somebody to shout about what you're going through. I need, I need, somebody, I need somebody to take courage right now. So I'm going to tell you something, this, that, this kind of teaching right here, it, 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 it's, it's, it's real, it's got, a, it's got a real twist to it. Because this is the kind of teaching that separates, that separates church people from tabernacle people. Because church people need the choir and all of that and the musician and everybody to have church. Tabernacle people just need an ark. I said I wasn't going to jack up. I was just going to calm down and just take my time and just really, and really, really, really teach this because, because God, God has been birthing this out in me in prayer. He said, he said, because when you are called according to the Levitical order to be a person that handles, that carries the Ark of the Covenant, you're carrying the part of the tabernacle that brings in the glory of God. Oh, Jesus. You're not just a piece of furniture. And so, and so, and so a tabernacle that has no ark is one that possesses no glory. Okay, okay. Okay. He said, when he called them, can I have three more minutes to just break this down? Can I have three more minutes to just break this down? When he called them, to establish this tabernacle. Watch this. Watch it. I just really want you to pay attention to this. When he calls them to establish this tabernacle, and he talked about the Ark of the Covenant, and, and you know, people, people see me across the country carrying it. It was like, oh, well, this is the Old Testament. Okay, whatever. So, you know, she crazy, and I am. So, you know, we all agree. You ain't got no argument out of me. You don't have no argument out of me. You don't have no argument out of my husband. It just, we know. We do know. <laughs> I told him that the other day. I said, you married me just to help. You know, you have crazy people. You have to have somebody with them. <laughs> you know, it's One of my little favorite series right now is Monk. Because he just real smart, but he just got issues. He just hired this girl to just be with him because he's crazy, just cleaning everything, just, just you know. And I, like the uh, Saturday night, I was in the prayer room, and I was just, you know, just sitting there, you know, praying and whatever, and just, you know, really just in a place with the Lord. I mean, my, my husband came to the door to tell me something, and he, he got ready to step up in, and he, and he looked at me, and he was like, can I? <laughs> he said, I gave him that look like, what do you want? Like... <laughs> Don't step on this. So he, he walked up and he was easing like this to me, like he was stepping. He said, I just wanted to say, and I had to bust out laughing. I said, I know I'm crazy. I know. It's just, just bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> A little bit over obsessive about, about, about the presence of the Lord. 
Because when you, because once you find a spot in your house and in your heart that is your peace, just a little bit obsessive about it. My little, my little, my little sound guy over there, he's, um, he's my, he's my Mr. Belvedere, my, my housekeeper and stuff. And so he, he, we, we was putting up the curtains in the, in the, um, in the prayer room and we are just, we're just moving to this new house and my husband, we was going through the house and he, and so he found the house and, and he said, you know, you ought to go look at this house. And, and so I got there and, you know, and, and I walked in the house and it was absolutely beautiful. And, and so I, I, I called him back and he said, um, I said, I said, this is the house. And he said, he said, I know because you walked in the room and it, and it was just, you know, the, the, the dining room and the living room was just so, and I said, no, I said, I walked all the way upstairs. And when I got to the top of the steps, there was one little room that was off down the hallway and it had three little steps. And when I stepped up in this little room, the power of God came down on me. I said, this is my house because the glory of the Lord is in this room right here. You don't hear me, you know it. So, so, so you know what? We're not going to buy no house because it's got columns and marble floors. We buy it because the glory of the Lord is in this room. Oh, come on here, somebody. See, that's how possessive you got to get about, about the glory of God. When you a person that know that you carry the Ark of the Covenant, if you got to find a little corner in your house, I don't care. It may not look like it's nothing to nobody else, but you got to find a place in the basement, in the closet. Come on here, somebody. In the back of the pantry, where every time you step over in that place, you step into a presence that cannot be denied. So I'm, so I'm getting somewhere with this. I'm getting somewhere with this. Because when you look at the power, the power of the Ark of the Covenant, I want you to look at something. When Israel got into a battle and they came and told uh, uh, Eli, they said, you know, you, you got two sons that went to war, the, the one of them dead. The Bible said no reaction. Then he told them, they said, now your second son he did too. No reaction. But when they said, and the Ark of the Covenant had been taken away from us, the Bible said he fell backwards and broke his neck. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Because see, that's the place that the body of Christ haven't come to yet. That when we realize that the glory of the Lord is trying to be taken away from us, you got to come to a place where you say, I can't live without the presence of the Lord. I just don't want to come to church and it's just church as usual. I want the presence of the Lord. That's how I survive. He said, well, if the Ark of the Covenant is gone, then I might as well break my neck and kill myself. Okay, you don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus. That thing went down to Obed Edom's house, and the whole time it was there, his house was blessed. Y'all ain't saying that. Until David looked up and watched this. This is what he said. And I'm moving quickly because I'll finish it tomorrow. David said that he waited until the people said. That's what my Bible said. He waited until the people said, let's go get it. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talking. See, pastors can want the glory all they want. Uh, elders can want the glory all they want. But until the tribe of Levites raise up and say, we've got to have the presence of the Lord. Okay, sit down because I want to, I want to, I want to make something clear about this. Because see, it don't mean nothing right now because it's just, it's just the ark. It's just a box. A gold box. <laughs> With mercy seat couple of carved angels but the thing that got me was this he said he kept saying this to Moses he said uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna design this ark and this is what he started saying that they grabbed me they grabbed me the other night and in it watch this 
and, and in it you shall put the tablets of the commandments of the testimony that I shall give you, that I shall give you. He said, he said, build this, build this, because in it you shall put the tablets of the testimony that I shall give you. Okay, the tablets of the testimony that I shall give you. Build it, and in it, you're going to put it in the tablets of the testimony that I shall give you. The tablets of the Ten Commandments. The tablets of thou shall not. And so, and so the minute the tablets of the testimony got inside of the box, the testimonies of thou shall not, it became like a stick of dynamite. Okay, you don't understand what I'm saying. This thing was so powerful that, 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 that outside of the temple, when they, when they stole it in battle, they took it to the temple of Dagon and they set it up. And so there was an idol god there. And when they came back, the thing had fell over. And they said, well, it must be a mistake because I know ain't nobody coming in here, you know, tampering with all of the, all of the gods and all of the, you know, all of the idols that we've set up. So they brought it back. When they came back the next day, the head was off. The arms was off. It was just a torso. What am I trying to say? What was in that box was so powerful that it did not need human assistance. What was in the box was so powerful, it broke down the idol god. What was in the box was so powerful, it didn't need all of the mechanics to make it work. It has power all by itself. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. So now, if we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, then where is the ark? It is in my heart. And what is in my heart is powerful enough to break down the hands of the enemy that's in my life. Sit down because I said I wasn't going to get out there real bad today. I promised myself I wouldn't. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just trying to calm down. Well, 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 what are you talking about? What are you talking about, prophetess? Okay, but what is, what is the tabernacle? What is it that makes me powerful? What is it that makes the devil hate me? Because when I determine that I am a person that lives with a do not in my heart. See, there's some stuff that God took out of you that he told you never to touch again. And when you live with a thou shall not in your heart, it causes you to operate in supernatural power. Sit down for a minute, cause we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta chew on that one for a minute. Gotta chew on that one for a minute. Mm. See, let me help you with something. Let me help you with your attacks. Can I help somebody with their warfare? Let me help you with your warfare. The enemy is not attacking you because you are a temple. He is attacking you because you have an ark in your temple. Let me help you with something. The devil ain't after attacking your car and your kids and your marriage and, and your money and your job. No, 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 no. He's after the testimony that is in your ark. Oh my God. That's why, that's why temptation comes greater than it ever has before. Because the enemy know if I can steal your testimony, then all you are is a temple with no power. Oh, come on here, somebody. That's why every time you turn around, the enemy is attacking you because he's trying to throw your focus off. He's trying to give you, get you to give up what's in your heart. And that's what he's afraid of. He's afraid of the fact that when you sink in your body, it still operates. When you depressed, it still operates. Who am I talking to? As long as you touch not, handle not, taste not, you got power in your life. Power is not by how I feel in my body or in my mind. It's what's in my heart. Oh. Okay, let me help you right there. Sit down for a minute because I know we about to, we about to explode and I don't want us to. 
and that's the reason why when you come to church and you don't feel like praising God and you don't feel like praying oh I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what to get a praise out of you quicker than anything let your mind go back to some stuff that God did for you see it's the power of your testimony that causes you to get up when you don't want to go it causes you to shout when you want to sit down it makes you dance it makes you run because the anointing that's on your life is in your testimony Y'all sit down. Let me just sit down for a minute. Let me just, let me just, let me just walk this for a minute. Can I tell you? Can I tell you how powerful you really are? Can I tell you how powerful you really are? You can gauge your level right now. You can gauge your level of the anointing right now. I'll tell you how. Because if you're in this place today and you got a testimony that you ain't never been able to tell nobody about, how you're the person that the devil absolutely hates. Who am I talking about right now? Sit down. Sit down. Point. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Lord Jesus. See, you think, you think, you think the devil just trying to tempt you. Uh uh, uh uh. The Lord is allowing that to see if you're going to maintain your power. Hey, he'll put it right in front of you. And every time you say, I don't do that, you increase in power. Every time you say, I don't touch that. You increase in power. Who am I talking about? Baby, power is not how many hours you spend in prayer. I'm here. Oh, God, I wish I had somebody. Because you know what? You got to get up and go to work. Power is not how many days you go, you go without eating. Power is how many hours and how many minutes you tell the devil no. Power is when you say to the enemy, I'm not there anymore. I don't touch that anymore. Because if I touch it, I lose the anointing of my life y'all sit down for a minute just just one minute just one minute just one minute okay let me let me just let me just check the room as I know see some of y'all can't praise him you can't praise him don't get mad at me don't be looking at me like that you can't praise him because you had the can't help it. Oh, come on, somebody. You can't praise him. Because you had to, where well, he understand. Let me tell you something. That's a trick of the enemy. When the devil tell you, well, it's my flesh. And the Lord know we in this body. And the Lord understand. And that's what he does understand. He understand that you're not a tabernacle with no glory. You're not a tabernacle with no power. You're not a tabernacle that can't pull down an idol. Who am I talking about? Let me tell you something. Moses said that when they put the ark in its place in the tabernacle, he said, God, uh, let your glory be revealed. Uh, but when they picked it up uh, and started walking with it, uh, he spoke to God and said, now let the ark uh, turn into my mighty battle axe. Uh, let the ark uh, go before us uh, and fight every battle. Who am I talking to? When you in the sanctuary, uh, it's the glory of God. Uh, but the minute you leave out of this building, uh, it turns into a mighty warrior. It starts fighting battles uh, that you don't even know you have yet. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Jesus. The testimony that's in your heart, sister, it, it's, it's, it's already fighting something that ain't even got to you yet. No, no, no. See, y'all, y'all, y'all. Okay. So then if the Lord said in your spirit 
Don't touch that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Da, 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 da. Everything that is in your future that resembles what he told you not to do. That's why he said, this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the power of the do nots that is in the list of the Ark of the Covenant in my heart. You don't hear what I'm saying? That's the reason why, even while temptation is present, the Bible said, with the temptation, he makes a way for you to escape because he has to keep his word. Oh, y'all talking about God keep me. He's not keeping you. He's keeping his word. Wait a minute. Sit down because I got to make that point. Oh God. It ain't you. It ain't about you. It's what he said. It's what he got to keep. That's why the devil don't want you to read the word. Because when you get it in your heart, God's got to keep what he says. Okay. Sit down. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Yes. I'm almost finished. Give me 10 minutes. I'm almost finished. Have you ever, have you ever uh, been, uh, been tempted in something and then you don't even know yourself how you got out? You just, you just, right in the middle of it. Hold on a minute, watch this. I'm going to tell you when you know you're out. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you when you know God done delivered you. Thank you, Jesus. When you doing it and your heart ain't in it no more. I said when you doing it and your heart ain't in it no more. That's your indication that the ark is fighting for you. Oh, come on here, somebody. Come on here, church. God, I wish I had some folk in here to tell the truth. Listen, I got a point I got to make right here. Sit down, I got a point I got to make right here. I'm, 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 almost, I'm almost out of just, 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 just hold the music. Just hold it. I see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me help you with this. Um... When you have a legitimate ark, nobody, nobody had to go around explaining this thing. Let me just watch this. Because they took it to one tribe and they said, we're going to bring it. He said, no, 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 don't bring that here. I'm sorry. We, we, we do not. Because that thing is killing people. It's, 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 no, no, I'm going to help you with this. Don't, don't. Don't bring it over here. We don't, we, don't, we don't want it over here. Because, you know, they heard about one group that got it. Now, you you, you got to hear this. You got to hear this, saints. You got to hear this. The one group that got it, and um, it, started, it started doing stuff. And, 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 and see, because the Ark of the Covenant comes with, comes with defined and legitimate characteristics that belongs to the body of Christ okay and every individual have a tablet of a testimony of a do not in their heart that may not be your neighbors and that's what let me tell you something let me tell you something and that's why and that's why you see people that that that, 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 that see stuff that God is doing and then they start trying to steal steal your stuff and and, and, and trying to look like you and preach like you and, and, and uh, uh, but, see, but see but see what happens what happens is, you know you a ministry over here you trying to build something you look up and the pastor down the street he done he done took the idea because of my tech, but but see but see when it's yours it doesn't work anywhere else God I wish I had somebody I wish I had somebody to help me right there when it when it when it's yours when it's yours it can it can it can be in your camp and it's a blessing it get into the wrong hands it start cursing them oh god i wish i had somebody to help me right there and so let me let me let me let me just help you with this so then the ark of the covenant it it it, 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 it traveled and then it was just 
people was dying. And then I said, God, I said, you really trying to show me something in this. And see, and, and, then, and then he got to this part right here. This is the part that just really just got. When, when the Bible said that there was a group of men that, 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 that felt like, you know, this is the Ark of the Covenant. But you know what? We, 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 what is in it? And let us, let us look at it. And the Bible said that when they lifted the mercy seat. See, the reason why there was a mercy seat on top of the ark. Because there's some stuff that the Lord has delivered you from. And it was his mercy and his grace. You don't hear what I'm saying? God, I wish I had a church in here. See, the reason why I'm stopping the music is because you ain't got no piano and no organ at your house. See, you got to learn how to dig up your testimony. And if you have to pull your car over on the side of the road, you got to learn how to get out and praise God until the devil recognizes that I understand the power that is in my life. It is not in the piano. My praise is not in the organ. My praise, it doesn't matter if the choir doesn't sing. My praise comes from my testimony. And every time I think of the goodness of Jesus, I break out in the grocery store. Sit down because we're going to sit down because we're going to practice. Sit down. Sit down. See, that's why I know when the Bible said, Oh, Zion, where is your strength? And we think. We're going to help Zion get strength because she's going to have an all-night prayer. We're going to help Zion get strength when Zion develops her power to tell the devil no to the past. Oh, y'all. Let me look at y'all because some of y'all looking like, you still sleepy. You better wake up. You better wake up because this is destiny. Oh, God, I'm here. Come on here, somebody. You better wake up because this is destiny. He said, they, 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 they lifted it up and they looked inside. And the Bible said when they looked inside, God struck them dead. And see, that's why you ain't got to worry about nobody looking at you saying, that's all right, honey. I know what she used to be. Because they just pronounced death on themselves. Because ain't nobody have authority to look at what the Lord has brought you from. Oh, come on here, somebody. The reason why is because the Lord is taking up where he brought you from. And he's turned it up into your power. He's turned it up into your anointing. Who am I talking about? That's why you better tell the devil he's a liar when he starts telling you what you used to be and how ugly you are. Tell the devil you just messed up because you just reminded me of the anointing that I have to tear your kingdom down. Sit down for a second. Sit down for a second. I just need 21 people in here. That's all right. Y'all think I'm crazy. But I just need 21 people in here. Y'all wait till I get some rest. Because I didn't get to bed until after 2 o'clock. So you know I'm, I'm feeling this. But wait, wait, wait till I get me some sleep. You wait till tomorrow. I want 21 people to give him a let me think back over my past praise. Okay, yo, yo, yo. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sit down right quick, because I want to tell you something right there. Wait a minute. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, because I want to remind you of something, that whatever you just saw is what you have the power to bring down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whatever you just saw is what you have the power to destroy. Whatever you just saw is the reason why the enemy uh, keeps coming after you, because when you come out of it, uh, you have authority over it. Uh, you can rebuke it every time you see it. You can cancel the contract of the enemy in anybody's life that you see the same spirit. Can you do me a favor before I go to this next phase? Touch your neighbor and say, I know him to be a deliverer. Oh, see, y'all playing with it. Y'all playing with it. Say, I know him to be a way maker. I know 
he will bring you out. Ah, glory to God. Praise him right now. Sit down for a minute. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Let me finish. I got to just finish this right quick. Let me finish. See, it's your praise that's telling the devil you missed it. And you was a fool for reminding me. You thought it was a dart. It wasn't a dart, it was energy. Come on here, somebody. You thought you were shooting a fiery dart by trying to depress me about what I don't have and where I done been. But baby, you just energized me. You just gave me power to come after your kingdom. You just reminded me that no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper because what I have in my temple is powerful. Y'all sit down. I gotta just bring this in. We got a minute to bring it. Bishop, that's it. See, you don't understand. With a headache, it still works. With a backache, it, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You keep trying to attach how much power you got to how you feel. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. With any feeling that you have, it still works. I'm not here. This ain't no feel good thing. This is a, this is a testimony thing. Who am I talking about? That's the reason why people can die with cancer. And the last words is, God, I give you the praise because it's not what about what's in my body. It's about what's in my temple. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Okay, sit down, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to close this. said they set it up there and the idol fell they set it back up there watch this I need you to get this they set it up there and the idol fell when they set it back up there the idol was destroyed. The thing, the thing that's in there, he wanted. He wanted. <laughs> what you going through ain't about you. He wants that thing. went through a hell over a box. Every time turned around, we said, okay, but just, just beat us to death and kill us. Why everybody keep fighting over this box? The same one. It didn't say they started out here and made one, and then they lost that one. And then they just went and got another one. And then they lost that one. And they, they went and got another one. David had to go to the threshing floor because he lost his. Y'all don't, don't understand. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. When he slept with Bathsheba, he lost. He could not establish the resting place of the Ark of the Covenant because he found it difficult to establish a resting place for it in his heart. Okay, I'm not here. Nobody talk to me. I'm not here. Nobody talk to me. 
That's the reason why he went and bought Arnon's threshing floor. And he said, you know what? This is the place that we're going to build the temple. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. See, the reason why you keep backsliding and keep falling by the way is because you never had a floor. You don't have a foundation of repentance. And when you find the ground to repent on, then God can establish the temple. Okay, okay, y'all sit down, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just. <laughs> where the church go? Everybody just got quiet. You trying to build something. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, we ain't got no foundation. And we ain't got no testimony. You know, I know that they don't do it now. But there was something very powerful about testimony service. I know we done cut out testimony service and now we got the praise team. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying, I'm not meddling. I'm not trying to meddle. I ain't trying to meddle. But don't play yourself. We had a praise team back then too. Y'all ain't saying that. We had a praise team. Praise teams ain't new. Microphones and technology is. Because, baby, I remember when there was one generator box in the church. And Mother Carol led testimony service. Get your time in. Pray day is coming after what? Oh, we had a praise team. I'm a soldier. Oh, we had a praise team. We had a praise team. But see, the only difference in our praise team, we mix the praise with the testimony. We sing one song and they say, will there be another one? And sometimes testimony service would whack the church out. Pastor didn't even have to preach. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Because when you look at it and see somebody bringing up the Ark of the Covenant because they kept their testimony, the Bible said, that's when fire fell from heaven. Okay, okay sit down. Bishop, we about to hit something right here. We about to hit something. I got, I got four minutes. I got four minutes, but I got to hit this. I got to hit this. <laughs> they said that when all of the Levites, they was bringing up the Ark of the... See, we, we, we play entirely too much. So when they was bringing up the Ark of the Covenant, this thing was so powerful that when Israel would get it, the enemies would say... That's a sound. Is that it? Well, they didn't even have to say what's going on over there. They ran and told each other, them people done got that ark back. Because I can hear it. See, when you get your ark back, ain't nobody got to make you praise God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. When you get your ark, honey, you don't even care if the praise team mess up. Uh, listen, I ain't got no favorite song because there's a sound. There's a sound that comes out of your spirit. It ain't no regular church praise. It ain't no Lord, I thank you. There's a, there's a, there's a, ha! there's a, there's a, how can I win a God? There's a praise that comes out of you that somebody would think that you are losing your mind. Uh, listen, listen, there's a sound that the enemy can hear when a person really has a Sit down, let me just say this, and I'm, I'm finished for real. I'm finished for real. I'm finished for real. I'm finished for real. Let me, let me, let me. See, this is what we said. We said, pray for me. You don't know what I'm going through. Just, just pray for me, because the devil is really attacking. The Bible said they got together. And got them pictures. They had no weapons. They had pictures. And they said, when we, when we all do this at the same time, God amplified the praises of the people that had the testimony till the enemy got confused. And the Bible said the devil turned on themselves. Okay, see. Oh, yeah, see. 
I got the wrong church. This is the new church. Uh huh. The new church is in the prayer line. Uh huh. The new church need the pastor to counsel them. Uh huh. But the old church, <laughs> when they keep the testimony and they make a certain sound, it confuses the enemy because the devil said, "I thought I just messed with her marriage. Why is she still praising God? I thought I just messed with her child. I, I knew she ain't got no praise. Oh my God. Oh my God. I thought I just, I just caused this woman to lose her house. I know she said because you know what? You can take that. But my prayer is, God." your Holy Spirit away from me because I'm from the old church in the Old Testament the Bible said that the more you oppress them the more they multiply as a matter of fact if you want to know how to get a quick blessing get in a trial let the devil start messing with you and at that very moment the Lord begins to multiply Y'all sit down because y'all, y'all sit down because y'all praise him like you don't even understand what I just said. Sit down. Sit down. Let me just help you with that. I got to say that one more time. Tribulation. See, the Bible said he would do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that work within you. Sometimes we have not gone far enough in purification to see the perfect will of the Lord for our lives. So we don't know how to ask. And so when the Lord sees that you're about to miss destiny, the quickest way he can get you to the destiny that he has for you that you can't see is to bring a trial. Because when he brings a trial, then he has to multiply. See, you, 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 you don't get it. Some of us is behind schedule for some stuff that God wanted to do for us because we didn't know how to ask. So the Lord said, I got to keep my word. So you know what? That thing that's in your life right now, baby, that's your multiplier. That thing is bringing you stuff that you don't even know is bringing you. Some of y'all don't even know how to praise God right there. Honey, that ain't a weapon of the devil. That's something that God has orchestrated because he want to get you to your divine destiny because the stuff that you're asking him for, he said, I got something bigger. I got something greater. Who am I preaching to? I wish I had a real church in here today. Okay. Okay, I close with this. I close with this. Close with this. I close with this. That's why the enemy tries to punk us about our walk with God. See, that's why we got sloppy agape Christianity. Because people don't know it's the testimony that's working for you. And the devil know you can do whatever you want to do. Lose that and I got you. That's why you be confronted with stuff and you be getting ready to say something, Holy Ghost. And people be telling you, if I was you, I would have told her off. And I, I would let her get away with that. See, because you, you need to put her in her place. I, I can't. Because the enemy trying to draw me out into a place in my past because he want me to slap her down and lose my testimony. And as a matter of fact, he ain't even wait till I get outside. He want me to jump on her in the church bathroom. Okay, I'm just helping somebody. I'm helping somebody right now. I'm helping somebody right now. Oh, yes, I am. Uh, he want me to go up. He want me to throw something all the way across the room in my office and knock my, knock, knock my boss's head off. And I don't even care if they fire me because he's trying to draw you out to a place. And that's all it is. It's like a bait. It's like a fishing rod. He throw it out there. Because he know that's your appetite. That was your old nature. But Peter says, we have, we have been given the divine nature of God. Which means what I used to desire to do, I don't anymore. The way I used to react, I don't anymore. Come on here, somebody. 
Now I know what you're trying to do. You throwing me a fishing rod with bait on it because you're trying to pull me out of my place in God. Because you know if you get my testimony, you got my power. I am nothing to work with. I have no authority. I cannot command anything. I can't cancel anything. I can do nothing without it. I'm closing. I'm finished for today. Sit down. No. We got that. I don't know what the other people do out there. But you know they say they, they meditate on Buddha. And they always go, hum, yum, 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 whatever that is. Hum, yum. You have to get to a place where stuff happens, you go, Lord, Jesus. Can I, can I, can I help you with that? Because I'm going to give you a secret. Because when they are Sleeping under their tents. That thing is working. It has a 24 hour mechanism in it. It works while you sleep. Okay, you don't get this. It's doing something for you now while you sit. Okay, now you don't want to break the flow by telling her off. Because if you, if you break the flow by telling her off, you, you just shut down this. No, I just, I just wish I could. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to. If I, if I, let me just help you. The job of the Levites was to maintain the temple. They didn't work in the city. You, 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 <laughs> They had no job in the city. Somebody talk to me right there. Somebody talk to me right there. They didn't work in the marketplace. Come on, talk to me. Their job was to maintain the order and the structure and the functioning of the temple. They had to make sure that the oil never ran out. They had to make sure that the light stayed on. They had to make sure that the coals on the altar stayed lit. They had to make sure that the bread was delivered fresh every day. Y'all not hearing me. You're not hearing me. That's why the believer ain't got time to work in the flesh outside of the temple. Because when you're called to carry the ark, your assignment is to maintain the temple. You got to make sure every day that the oil of the anointing is running in your life. You got to make sure every day that there's fresh word coming into your spirit. You got to make sure every day that everything is set in order and that the ark of the covenant has power because you've kept your testimony. y'all looking at me now so I know I'm finished you just staring at me I know I'm finished I ain't got time to get all out here with you and I said I didn't say that you said I did say it. and you that's what she said and, and she always do that to me when I come to church I ain't got time because I don't work in the marketplace my job is to maintain the temple See, I can't get nobody to say, man, move out the way, because some of y'all are here that's sitting out here. I got to, I got to say that again. I can't afford to get into no altercation with you. My job is not the marketplace. It is to maintain the temple. I don't have time to argue with you about a nurse's position. I quit the nurse's board first, because my job is to maintain this temple. Who am I preaching to right there? I will get out of the choir. I don't care if you don't give me a song. My job is to maintain the temple and to all oh, y'all and to operate with the power of the ark of the covenant. I will not lose my temple for a possession.
Do me a favor as I close. Touch three people. I said, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Tell them because prophet is, prophet is sent that the enemy then brought something your way. And he wants you to lose it. Oh, come on, somebody. Tell them don't lose it. Because he after it. Oh, that's, 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 that's my real job. My real job is to, uh, is to, uh, watch this. Is to, is to make sure, and it's, we'll pick this up tomorrow, is to make sure that every day, all day, <laughs> that there is a sacrifice. Sit down, I'm finished, on the altar. <laughs> you gave me the hardest job in the whole conference. You gave me the hardest job in the whole conference. Is, uh, is, is, uh, is to, is, to, uh, is to make sure, Bishop, that there is a, you know, we want the glory, glory, glory of God. Mm, 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 mm. The testimony, the testimony, um, the testimony, and the glory of God on the testimony is ignited by the level of the power, the sacrifice. That's why Buki and Trish and them stayed in the bed and you couldn't. Because, because, because the Bible says that the outer court, the outer court was for anybody. Church people, everybody, everybody can come to the outer court. But see, the holy place and the most holy place can only be entered in by the Levitical priesthood. Y'all better talk to me. Y'all better talk to me. Y'all better talk to me. That's what the Bible said. Now you are his royal priesthood. Come on here, somebody. What am I talking about? There's another level in the kingdom that you have to mature to. And that's when you come to the level of the priesthood, when you understand what it means to sacrifice on behalf of the tabernacle. That's why Jesus didn't mind getting up on the altar and presenting himself as a sacrifice. He was a sacrificial lamb. That's what the Bible said. Every day, present your body a living, a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Why? Because this is where your power comes from. Every day, take your seats. Every day, come on, come on, go to the mall with me. I, I, I can't. I gotta get up on this altar. I got. Why, why don't you come and hang out with me? We going by, we been going by Cookie Them House. I, I want to go with you, but I got to get up on. I ain't been on the altar yet to present my body a living sacrifice. You don't hear me. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. See, see every day, every day that you don't slap my teeth out, you just presented your body a living sacrifice. Every day that you don't tell them off, you just presented your body a living sacrifice. Every time you don't get mad because they mistreat you in the choir, you present your body a living sacrifice. What does that mean? You cause the fire to be ignited on the altar. And when the fire gets ignited on the altar, the glory of the Lord hits the temple. Finish this tomorrow. I'm gonna finish this tomorrow. Let me make this statement. You got too much fight in you. You got too much, I'm gonna fix it in you. For God to get the glory. I'll say this really and I'm going there was one point when they stole the ark and Israel asked the Lord now watch this and I'll close with this should we go out to battle and God told them yes and they went out and lost and the people took the took the ark from them that puzzled me for some days and I really did seek the Lord about that. I said, God, what, well, what does that mean? 
How are you going to give the people a word and tell them to go to battle and then they lose the battle? And Dad, you know what he showed me in that? He said, he said, I caused them to lose the physical battle so that they can see the potential of the ark without them. So they can see that what they're carrying has a power all by itself. I had to show them because they got into the battle and sometimes we get into the battle and we think we win in it. And so sometimes God got to let you lose it so that what's supposed to be fighting for you can win it. Y'all too sleepy for that revelation. I'm, I'm sorry I even put that on you. You got to... See, some, sometimes you got to understand that you, that you may lose the battle, but you done won the war. So you had to let it travel without them. <laughs> Destroying their enemies and it ain't even with them. Causing boils and mice and torment. And it's not even with them. This is the new order. The body of Christ had traveled down through the paths of the tribes. The Bible said that when they begin to name the tribes, and when they got to the Levites, they said, but these people right here, this is the place that you come to where you stop asking, where's mine? Okay, I just said something. <laughs> I just said something so powerful. Holy Ghost just said something so powerful. This is the place where you, where you stop asking, when is my turn? When, when, when is they going? Where is my this and my that? This is the place that you get to where you say, when he got to all of them, he said, give them this much grain and give them this much fabric and let them be over all of the fields and let them be over all of the fabric let them be over this and let them be over that. Give them these portions and let them work this to the benefit of their lineage. But to the Levites, I'm your portion. <laughs> Which means all that you will ever need you know, my, mother, my mother used to say it all the time. I don't want you out there in the church getting nothing from nobody. Don't be asking nobody out there for money. Don't take no candy from nobody. Everything you need, I got what you need. This is the place where the Lord began to cut all soul ties and all false dependencies. This is where he stick you out there by yourself and say, swim or sink. He said, because... I am your portion. <laughs> this is where you take pleasure in serving the Lord with no pay. Okay, I understand. No, because we have a we have a we have a kingdom now of hirelings because we are running ministries of tribes. The church hasn't gotten to the state of the Levitical priesthood. Where the people say, I'll go work. But I'll serve in the, in the temple for nothing. Because the Lord is my portion. I'll keep the fire going. I'll keep the temple clean. And so we send... We, set our affections and our emotions on stuff and inside we have a rackety temple you can't spend your money and come to a conference and go back with a raggedy temple when the Lord bring you to a place 
Well, he helps you to recognize the Ark of the Covenant in your heart. And he said, don't. I don't care who do. And you got people in here today that have allowed people to talk you out of. But don't let nobody bind you up, honey. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Girl, go on. Because we all have individual things that the Lord said, do not because he knows why. I ain't saying nothing. Okay, that, you don't want to say nothing, so I'll just, I'll just talk about myself. I'll talk about myself. There are things that the Lord will say, don't do that. I mean, a long, 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 long time ago, I used to love blonde hair. Oh my God. Oh, that was just so sexy and hot. I dyed my hair one time. My mother said, you look just like the devil. I said, that's all right. I like it. And I thought it was just it. And the Holy Ghost got a hold of me one day and he said, don't ever put no more blonde in your hair. And I mean, and here go my friends. See, that's just tradition and people trying to bind you up. Girl, wear your hair. Why you take that blonde out your hair? Somebody in their flesh? Somebody that's in a lower grade than me? Somebody that ain't going to the same destiny I'm going to? Okay, don't play yourself. Because you got the wrong people talking in your ear and they not headed where you headed. And when the Lord stopped calling for certain sacrifices, it's because he's trying to under help you understand where you about to be positioned. See, y'all, 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 y'all need to understand what we're talking about. When you talk about Washington, D.C. and Capitol Hill, you're not coming up in there with shaking hoop earrings on because they have a dress code. And they tell you now, everything is conservative. Navy blues and blacks. Powder blue blouse is about the worst you can get. Pierce post earrings. A certain centimeter wide. Certain kind of shoes. No glitter. Nothing shiny. And you can go to college and work and get a degree in politics and let your friends tell you. Go on, put blonde in your hair. Girl, wear you some silver shirts. Wear your sparkles on the wall up there at Capitol Hill. Don't let nobody tell you what you have. And you won't have a job. And everything you worked for will come to nothing listening to somebody who ain't headed where you headed. And blonde is all right for anybody that want it. It's all right for you, your grandmama, your auntie. God just told me no. I can go to dinner with you and you got blonde. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I can shout right in church next to you. And yours is beautiful. But the thou shalt not in my heart said you don't. When the Holy Ghost gives you a you don't, then you don't. Because that's you maintaining your testimony. If you do not live what a thou shall not list in your heart, you don't belong to God. Because he never builds a temple without an ark and without commandments. See, I don't care. I don't care how much people say this. Ain't nobody gonna tell me I ain't saved. I ain't forget y'all. I ain't, I know I'm saved. And ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing. Mm -mm. mm -mm. I can tell you that you ain't. Because every true temple has an ark. Watch this. One. One. Mm -hmm. And every temple have tablets of a testimony. And every temple possess thou shalt not. And if you can still wear what you want to do, go where you want to go, still disco, still listen to Luther, still listen to everybody. Still listen to Jay-Z and Beyonce and all that, I can tell you, your ark is in trouble. Because when I searched the scripture, I didn't find Jay-Z in the ark. 
It told you what to go in it. Y'all ain't saying that. Okay. <laughs> See, he wasn't going to leave the box up to us to just to decide what we wanted to put in it. He already told us what's to go in it. Beyonce wasn't in it. Shake your booty and lick me up and suck me down. It's not in it. I want to love you in the midnight hour and rock you tonight. Wasn't in it. It was holy unto the Lord. God, I wish I had a church right there. Because I just hit something right there. We're trying to put too much stuff in the ark. And then you know what? We only want it to work when it concerns something that we want God to do. And he will not be prostituted. He will respond to those that keep his commandments. I love the Lord if you love me, keep my commandments. I love the Lord if you love me, keep my commandments. You, you didn't determine. When they went in the tabernacle, the testimony went in first. The budding of the branch went in second. That says, I choose who I want. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because the people start murmuring, complaining, well, Moses, why you gotta choose all your family? I see a conspiracy. Got all your family doing everything. God says, shut up. Okay, I do what I want to do. So put this in here because I make the decisions. Because if it was up to man, none of y'all wouldn't be chosen. If it was up to man, I wouldn't be preaching. If it was up to all the gossip that people say about me, I wouldn't even still be here. But I got a budding branch in mind. <laughs> and it says he chooses who he wants. He said, put the manna in there. That testifies that I shall provide in the wilderness. That I'll cause food to fall from heaven. See, I don't have nobody in here to help me right there. Because you done lost the order. You done lost the order of the ark. Because the true order of the ark that says, I don't, I don't have to see the convenience of it. He'll, he'll drop it out the sky. He'll create it if he can't find it. He'll go to another country. A few months back. I think it was early part of last, late latter part of last year. We were doing some things and getting ready for conference. And I said, God, I said, I, I need the da-da-da-da. And I had, you know, just everything was just flowing in different directions. And I went into the threshing floor room and I prayed. And the Lord began to say to me, you got to believe me in the magnitude of who I am. You cannot believe me by the order of what you see. Because we have orders all around us and we believe in God according to the order around us. And I began to pray. And the Lord gave me a word. He said, I will search America to provide this. But if I can't find nobody in America, I'll search the world. But I will do it for you. Eight days later, I got an envelope with a cashier's check from a lady in London that said God woke her up in the middle of the night. And it wasn't no couple of thousand dollars. And told her to go to the bank the next day and get this money. And overnight express it to Juanita by the ministers. Who am I talking to in here? You know what? We're depending on the arm of flesh. Because we forgot that there's a working ark in us. It works. When they bear it. Upon their shoulders. It provides peace in the midst of a storm. It rains quail. Y'all gonna hit me. It causes shoes not to wear out in the wilderness. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It ain't no grocery store, but he brings it. Okay, that's okay, y'all. Yeah. It ain't no job, but you don't miss a beat. He keeps on paying the bills. And you don't even know how it's being done. What he wants you to know is it ain't no secret. He wants you to have the pattern of what you got. So you can stop hitting one day and missing the next. He wants you to have a dependency on your thou shalt not. Because you said in your word.
And I read it this morning that I will command the blessing. All over this building. I'm just in a different place. I'm in a different place. He said, I'll command the blessing. All the stuff that's on your prayer list, and y'all think I'm playing. I'm not just saying this to tickle your ears. I promise you, I'm not saying this to make you feel good. Like, oh, this is just, this is so powerful. No, this is for real. All the stuff that you're praying about, that you want God to work out, that you want God to fix, it ain't nothing to God. He does that all the time for the people that, that have an ark. He pays attention. He pays attention to the people that are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. That Ark went in. It took him all the way. The same one. What am I trying to say? He don't change because it's 2006. Okay. He ain't got a new one with new rules. And this one said you can wear booty shorts and Ain't no new rule. This one still got holiness written on it. All over this building I'm going. We're moving to levels of maturity. This is what I want to say to you. Bishop, and this really changed my life. It said, Dr. Weeks, it said that when the people saw the Levites bring the Ark of the Covenant, they became so overwhelmed at the glory of God that the seed offering that they gave was 12 miles long. Y'all ain't saying that. And God showed me something in that. He said, the reason why we cannot finance the kingdom because the glory of the Lord has not been revealed. Because when the people saw the completion of the temple, Queen of Sheba said, I fainted. She turned around and started giving to Solomon. Let me tell you something. And I'm saying this in the scripture because I don't, I believe that we're coming to a place and I'm not talking to all of y'all, I'm talking to some of y'all. Because some of y'all will never get this. But I believe that I had a, a, a glory experience. And the Lord spoke a word to me about five weeks ago in the morning prayer in D.C., and I had an ex I just had an, a glorious experience. I was walking around my bedroom, and the presence of I had the the worship music on, and the presence of the Lord just filled the room. To I I could hardly stand up. And He said to me, every Sunday morning I want you to give five thousand dollars until I tell you to stop. I saw something in the spirit. It was so glorious. That something in me that just keep wanting to bring something to it. I've never, I, I've given and I've always been a given. My dad know that about me. But this time it was like the presence. It was almost like, God, I'll, I'll pay you not to go away. It didn't mean anything. You know, I. And I've, I've been obeying him. And I, 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 I can't miss. Because we have been experiencing something glorious in 5 a.m. But the Bible said when they got through building the temple. David said. Literally. David said in the scripture that there was a stash of monies that I dared not touch. And when I saw the glory, I had to go and get it. Yes, he did. That's in the scripture. 
That's in the script. I, doctor, it's, a, it's in there. I just wish I had some Bible scholars. It's in there. You, you'll see it. He said, it's in there. He, 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 said, he said, when I saw it, there was monies that I wasn't going to even touch. But I had to go and get it. Because I experienced something that is glorious. This is what we do. We've come to the place of testimony. Where our provoking to give and our encouraging to give is because of another man's testimony. Or is because we're prompted to faith. But the Levites gave because they was prompted by the glory of God. My God. They brought to the Lord because they saw something that was revealed to them that they had never seen before. I'm going to finish this tomorrow. So what the Lord has been doing in me in the last five, six weeks in Tuesday morning prayer, Sunday morning prayer, I don't want people to bring offerings. And I don't even necessarily want everybody to bring an offering if you don't want to. I, he has anointed me. And people that have been in Tuesday morning prayer and people that have been in the 5 a.m. Sunday prayer know this to be a testimony that he has anointed me to draw out, pay attention to, take hold of, bring up the Levitical priesthood. He has anointed me to do it. If you want to know where the anointing is resting on my life now, is to find the people. Because Bishop Weeks, the Bible said that they were the people that made sure that the temple was maintained. On Sunday mornings, my husband was here, he can tell you. The offerings are overwhelming. We have four services a Sunday. About 800 people in every service. 5 a.m. prayer is packed all the way to the back door. But what God does in the 5 a.m., he said, there is a people that is sitting in the midst of the people that have been called to financially maintain the temple. And these people, they are not givers. Okay, I want to separate that. These people, watch this, are not just sowers. Listen, these are not the people that says, I gave an offering. These are not the people that says, I gave a seed. These are the people that says, I made a vow. I made a vow. And I'm going to tell you something by way of the Holy Ghost. We will never see in all the things that the Lord has done for me in the last three months have blown me away since I have declared the office of the Levite. Day before yesterday, I was in the bank and I was doing some things and I had to pay some bills and get some things done and I was getting a couple of cashier's checks and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I had, I had interviewed this lady a long time ago, about three months ago, and she said, I remember her saying she was going to Bulgaria to do a camp for children and, and I was interviewing her and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, get $15,000 right now and call this lady's ministry. And I got, I told, Madge was with me. I said, get on the phone and call these people and get me an address and da, da, da. I said, because I got to send these people some money for Bulgaria because I am a maintainer of the works of the temple. I'm, 
I, 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 I accept. See, people say, well, I, I, one day God going to call me to be a pastor, and one day the Lord going to call me to be a prophet. And I believe that that's the call. I have moved past all of those positions, and I have taken my final position in God. I am legitimately a Levitical priesthood. I have been ordained into the office of maintaining the temple. means I don't just do one thing I do all things if they need me to come in here tomorrow and vacuum this floor I will vacuum this floor I don't think you hear what I'm saying if they need me to sit over there and be a nurse I will take this robe off I will put on a nurse's uniform because it doesn't depreciate because you know what I've given up the office of all the offices I've taken on the mantle that is universal and the mantle that has no limit the mantle that does it all it's the priesthood it's the Levitical it washes clothes. It vacuums the church. It gives the seeds. You don't hear me. It does testimony service. It does whatever is needed. For the temple. I just gave up. I brought my treasure to his presence, my sister. And I offered it up to him. Four weeks ago, they started to do the youth center for our church. And I was driving down the street. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I want you to give $25,000 to this youth. And something in my spirit now never says, what? The Lord. Oh. It's my office now. It's as easy as preaching. I don't struggle because it's my office. You don't, you don't, you, you didn't hear me. And when you see what the Lord has done for me in a few months, it's going to blow you away. I'm literally walking in a realm of it ain't never happened. this whole thing started I was on my way to LA to shoot the pilot for my talk show for BET and they said we're going to shoot the pilot the Lord started this whole Levitical priesthood he said and the people said we want you to do that I said I can't do that because I can't miss Sunday morning prayer we want you to come up no I can't do that either on a Monday because I can't miss Tuesday morning prayer and my sound guy said we were on the plane the other day. He said, I sat down on the plane and said, we doing all of this for, we in the airport all this long time, sitting in this airport for three and four hours, delayed flight, because she on her way to a prayer? No, I'm on my way to my office. I said, you can shoot television on this day, this day, this day. You can't shoot it on this day. Because I have to be in Tuesday morning prayer. And I have to be in Sunday morning prayer. And I got out there and they said, you're going to shoot the pilot. And we're going to show it. And then we'll just get back with you. I got out there. I started my Levitical priesthood assignment. Shot the pilot. They said, we'll talk about, you know, you signed the contract. I got in the limo and was pulling off. And the senior executive ran and chased my limousine down. And said, the president of the company just called us and said, don't let you pull off. Sign this right now. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. And it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be signed for four shows to put into the circuit. They scratched that out and put 30 shows for a whole season. When they shopped it and they took it to show it before all the people that, that, that they sell advertisement to at the big meeting where all the networks come and they show what's going to be their new show is coming up. And then, you know, Quaker Oaks and different people said, well, I'm going to buy commercial time, I'm going to buy commercial time. They went to show it for commercial time. 
and I'm not able to tell you which one, but one of the top leading networks in this nation called them and said, we don't want to buy commercial time. We want to buy the show. So when it starts, it's going into syndication all over the world. That doesn't happen. Oh, y'all playing too much. Because God gave me to take a Levitical priest and sit him on secular television. And they told me, you can bring Jesus with you. We want you to talk about Jesus. Oh, y'all, come on. president of BT looked me in my face and said to me, I've watched you on the TV in there. Can you bring that same God and give it to people? And I'm not going to even tell you how much my contract worth, but I promise you I ain't going to never be broke. So why are we trying to hustle the kingdom? Why are we trying to hustle the kingdom? The testimony is, the testimony is that the wealth of the world, you don't, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. Your blessing is not coming from in the church. The wealth of the world. God, I wish I had somebody to see that. It ain't coming from somebody that's going to hand you a thousand dollar check. It's coming from the world. When you get the concept of the Levitical priesthood, he said to the sinner man, I will cause him to store up wealth that I may take it from him and give it to those that please him. He said to me that the secret to your success in your finances is that you'll sow to the kingdom and you'll reap it from the world. You'll sow to the kingdom and you'll reap it from the world. And all the seeds that I've sown, all the times that I've given, all the $10,000 seeds, all the $25,000, all the $100,000 seeds, my blessings is overtaking me. They, 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 they turn around and sign me to a contract with Time Warner. The same people that does Joyce Meyer's books and John Osteen's books. You don't understand. You don't understand what the Lord does with the office of the Levite. Then you become his portion. And all the world therein now belongs to you. Now you can call it in. <laughs> 